Hey kids, it's time for another session of story time with the Krishna book. Today I'm going to tell you the story of how Krishna stole the clothes of the gopis. Let's get comfortable now. Early in the morning, the gopis used to go to the bank of the Yamuna to take a bath. They would assemble together, capturing each other's hands, and loudly sing of the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. It is an old system among Indian girls and women that when they take a bath in a river, they place their garments on the bank and dip into the water completely naked. <laughs> the portion of the river where the girls and women take bath it was strictly prohibited to any male member, and this is still the system. The supreme personality of Godhead, knowing the minds of the unmarried young gopis, benedicted them with their desired objective. They had prayed for Krishna to become their husband, and Krishna wanted to fulfill their desires. Appearing on the scene, Krishna immediately collected all the garments of the gopis, climbed up in a tree, and with smiling face, began to speak to them. My dear girls, he said, please come here one after another and pray for your garments and then take them away. I am not joking with you, I am just telling the truth. I have no desire to play any joke with you. For you have observed the regulative principles for one month by worshipping goddess Katyayani. Please do not come here all at once. Come alone. I want to see each of you in your complete beauty, aka totally butt naked. For you all have thin waists. No fatties, please. I have requested you to come alone. Now please comply. When the girls in the water heard such joking words from Krishna, they began to look at one another and smile. <laughs> They were very joyous to hear such a request from Krishna because they were already in love with him. Out of shyness, they looked at one another, but they could not come out of the water because they were naked. <laughs> like, duh. Due to remaining in the water for a long time, they felt cold and were shivering, and their nipples were probably totally hard by then. <laughs> know what I mean? Yet upon hearing the pleasing and joking words of Govinda, their minds were perturbed with great joy. They began to tell Krishna, My dear son of Nanda Maharaj, please do not joke with us in that way. It is completely unjust to us. You are a very respectable boy, because you are the son of Nanda Maharaj, and you are very dear to us. But you should not play this joke on us, because now we are all shivering from the cold water. Kindly deliver our garments immediately, otherwise we shall suffer. Then they began to appeal to Krishna with great submission. Dear Shamasundar, they said, we are all your eternal servitors. Whatever you order us to do, we are obliged to perform without hesitation, because we consider it our religious duty. But if you insist on putting this proposal to us, which is impossible to perform, then certainly we will have to go to Nanda Maharaj and lodge a complaint against you. If Nanda Maharaj does not take action, then we shall tell King Kamsa about your misbehavior, naughty Krishna. Upon hearing this appeal by the unmarried gopis, Krishna answered, My dear girls, if you think that you are my eternal servitors and you are always ready to execute my order, then my request is that, with your smiling faces, put a smile on, bitches, you please come here alone, one after another, and take away your garments. If you do not come here, however, and if you lodge complaints to my father, I shall not care anyway, for I know my father is old and cannot take any action against me. <laughs> when the gopis saw that Krishna was strong and determined, oh, love a man like him, they had no alternative but to abide by his order. Bitch has got to be told what to do. One after another, they came out of the water, but because they were completely naked, like we stated like five times already, <laughs> They tried to cover their nakedness by placing their left hand over their pubic area. In that posture, they were all shivering. Their simple presentation was so pure that Lord Krishna immediately became pleased with them. Oh, duh. Naked bitches are hot. All the unmarried gopis who prayed to Katyayani to have Krishna as her husband were thus satisfied. A woman cannot be naked before any male except her husband. The unmarried gopis desired Krishna as her husband, and he fulfilled their desire in this way. Remember that, boys. Being pleased with them, he took their garments on his shoulder and began to speak as follows. My dear girls, you have committed a great offense by going naked in the river Yamuna. <sighs> because of this, the predominating deity of Yamuna, Varunadev, has become displeased with you. 
Please, therefore, just touch your foreheads with folded palms and bow down before the demigod Varuna in order to be excused from this offensive act. I really need to see your asses, so bend over, please. The gopis were all simple souls, obviously. And whatever Krishna said, they took to be true. In order to be freed from the wrath of Varunadeva, as well as to fulfill the desire end of their vows and ultimately to please their worshipful Lord Krishna, they immediately abided by his order. Thus they became the greatest lovers of Krishna and his most obedient servitors. Nothing can compare to the Krishna consciousness of the gopis. Actually, the gopis did not care for Varuna or any other demigod. They only wanted to satisfy Krishna. Krishna became very ingratiated and satisfied by the simple dealings of the gopis, and he immediately delivered their respective garments one after another. Although Krishna cheated the young unmarried gopis and made them stand naked before him and enjoy joking words with them, and although he treated them just like dolls and stole their garments, they were still pleased with him and never lodged complaints against him because they were such airhead bitches. This attitude of the gopis is described by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he prays, My dear Lord Krishna, you may embrace me or trample me under your feet. Or you may make me broken-hearted by never being present before me. Whatever you like, I am your bitch. Please fuck me. This is the attitude of the gopis towards Krishna. Lord Krishna was pleased with them, and since they all desired to have him as their husband, he told them, My dear well-behaved girls, I know of your desire for me and why you worshipped goddess Katyayani, and I completely approve of your action. Anyone whose full consciousness is always observed in me, even if in lust, is elevated. As a fried seed cannot fructify, so any desire in connection with my loving service cannot produce any fruit of result as an ordinary karma. My dear gopis, Krishna continued, your desire to have me as your husband will be fulfilled because with this desire you have worshipped Katayani. I promise you that during the next autumn season you shall be able to meet with me and you shall enjoy me as your husband. <laughs> Giggity. And that is the story of how Krishna, being the naughty boy he is, stole the gopis' clothes, forced them to come out naked, made fun of them, and then pacified them because he's God he can do whatever he wants and he's awesome and we should all worship guys like him remember that girls and also guys teach that to your daughters I'm sure all those fathers out there will love to have a guy like Krishna taking care of their daughters bye